بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا حبيبنا نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Point 17 له معنى روبية ولا مربوب ومعنى الخالق ولا مخلوق to him belongs the meaning of lordship in spite of having anyone to lord over. And to him is the meaning of creator in spite of having a creation. God is lord, God is master in spite of having anyone as his subjects and slaves. And God is the creator in spite of having anything that's created. وَكَمَا Next point, 18. وَكَمَا and like that he is the one that gives life to death after they had life God is the one that will give life to the dead after they had life and still deserving of this name even before they had life in the first place. God is the one that will resurrect the dead and give life to the dead. But he is deserving of this name of the resurrector or the one that gives life to the dead even before they were ever had life in the first place. And just like that, he is deserving of the name of the Creator even before their creation. Next point, 19. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ وَكُلُّ شَيْءٍ إِلَيْهِ فَقِيرٍ وَكُلُّ أَمْرٍ عَلَيْهِ يَسِيرٍ لَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى شَيْءٍ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرِ سبحان الله Brothers, this aqeedah, this belief of the Muslims is so pristine and so pure and wallahi the Christians need this aqeedah so badly because their understanding of God has truly, truly went into polytheism and somewhere that was never intended by the messengers that were sent to them. Listen to this next point. The author, he says, that is because God over all things is powerful and everything or everyone to him is impoverished and in need and every matter to him is easy and he has no need for anything and then he mentions the ayat well, Allah says, and there is nothing similar like him, yet he is the hearing 
and the seen. Allah is Al Qadir, the one that has power over all things. And everyone before God is faqir, is poor and impoverished, is in need. Everyone and everything, animate or inanimate, human or jinn, peasant or king, king or prophet. The lead of the prophets to the least of human beings. All of them, all of us, everything before God is impoverished and in need. And in particular, when we look at the Christian theology, this includes Jesus alayhi salam as well. Peace be upon him. Jesus was in need, was he not? Are we not going to testify to the fact that even the Bible shows us that Jesus was in need? Jesus was in the womb of Mary for nine months. And he needed to be nourished. And he needed to be there and maintained by his mother. And he needed her to deliver him out. And then he needed to be circumcised. And then he needed to be educated. And he needed to be fed and raised and brought up. And then when he was older and he began to preach the message and he was opposed, he needed help. He needed someone to defend him. He prayed to God because he was in need. He cried to God because he was in need. He took shelter and help from God because he was in need. This is all testifiable to the passages of the Bible and the New Testament about Jesus. And then according to the New Testament, Ultimately, he's killed and cried to God and asked God, why have thou forsaken me? Prior to. Now the Christians will tell us that this is part of prophecy and whatever they make it to be, the bottom line is, is you testify to the fact that this man was in need and he called upon God Almighty for his needs. How dare then you turn around and say the one that was in need and the one that called upon God is God himself. How can we say this? How? And we're going to see how this is impossible in a follow example. We looked at this point earlier that to God is the meaning of Lordship. God is the Lord in spite of having anyone to Lord over. And to God is the meaning of creation, is, is the creator, the meaning of the creator in spite of having a creation. If Lordship belongs to God and the status of Creator belongs to God, how then can we remove this from God and put God in the opposite category of being Marabub and being Makhluk? By calling God Jesus, you have now dethroned God, and instead of God being Lord, He's a slave. And instead of God being a creator, He's a, he's a creation. This is what happens when you call God Jesus. How can you do that? How can you in your mind fathom that God can be a man without committing blasphemy against God? Is God a slave? Is God created? Is God someone that's in need? Also, this idea of God being Lord 
it means that worship and devotion is due to God alone. So by making God into Jesus, by calling Jesus God or God Jesus, now you're saying that God is a slave. And God, instead of being the one that receives worship, is now giving worship. How can we do this without realizing that this is blasphemy? So again, everything before God is impoverished and poor. And this is the point I was making. And every affair for God is easy. But yet, when we look in the life of Jesus, we find that his affair in his life in his life was not very easy. He had some great challenges. Now the Christian may tell us that he did this, he humbled himself, and he you know willfully became um, someone in need in, in this circumstance, in this situation. But again, this is dethroning God and attributing to God something that is completely unbefitting and unacceptable to address God as. And often he says, and God is in need of nothing. God is in need of nothing. La yahtaju ila shay. That there, he has no need for anything. Did Jesus have a need? Yes, he did. And if you begin to tell us that, well, this was the human aspect of Jesus. This was the human aspect of God. Is there a human aspect of God? Since when? The incarnation? This is a doctrine that you have fabricated against God Almighty. This is a doctrine you have fabricated against God Almighty. And we say, Subhanallah, Amma Yasifun. Glory and exalted is God above what you have ascribed to Him. The Christians have a serious problem with the Muslims because they tell us that if God wanted to become a man, why can't He become a man? How can we limit God? How can we tell God that He can't do? This is the argument of the Christians to the Muslims. The Muslims, our response to them, and please listen carefully, our response to them is that indeed, in fact, we do limit, not God, but we limit what we say about God. Because God has gave us a standard by which we understand Him and we cannot bring Him below that standard. He's God and we cannot begin to attribute and affix attributes and qualities to Him that will make Him ungodly. So when the Muslims say God can't, because we do say God can't, we say it for instance, God can't be ignorant. God can't be deaf. God can't be blind. God can't be weak. God can't be dead. Yes, there are things that we say that can't about God. But when we say that God can't do these things, we're not saying it because we are limiting God. We are saying it because we are exalting God. We are not expressing this out of limitation. Rather, we are expressing it out of exaltation. We say God is too great to be weak. God is too great to be deaf. God is too great to be blind. God is too great to die. Do you understand? It's a big difference. But because the Christians have adopted this idea that God can be weak in these things, 
this blasphemous polytheistic idea, then they say anything about God. And the Muslims say, stop. You have to stop. But we say God can't out of out of exaltation of God, out of the greatness of God, out of the magnanimous of God, out of the the this the the, the divine qualities that God have can never be subject to human frailty. And out of this articulation is why we say there are things that God can't do. God can't desist from being God. So this is what we want the Christians to understand when we limit what we say about God Almighty. Point number 20, and we come in 30 points and then we're close. The author, he says, that God, he created the creation by his knowledge. God was well informed about his creation and how he created them. And this goes against the idea that the Christians hold that God needed to become a man so he can sympathize with us. So he can feel our pain. He can feel, this is what you hear from Christians. God took on this form so he can identify with human beings. He can feel our suffering. He can feel our pain. You think God needs to become a human being and humiliate himself to the point of death to feel our pain? God knows us better than we know our own selves. God knows what we will say even before we knew what we would say. So to say that God needed to assume an incarnate body and experience in nature so that God can feel us, this is fallacious and blasphemous. And it goes against the Bible itself. It goes against the Bible itself. For you have a verse in the Bible in Psalms. In Psalms. It says, You have you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit. And when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. This is a verse in the Bible in Psalms. So we can't accept the idea that God needs to become incarnate in order for him to fully understand how human beings feel. This is unacceptable. So the author says that indeed Allah, he created the creation of by his knowledge. He was well aware of his creation. And when we look at the creation of human beings, we see what an excellent creation indeed it is. And Allah says in the Quran that indeed Allah, blessed be Allah, the best to create. That the human being is created with a design and a knowledge. And God created him with such. This also goes against the idea in the Bible where God is supposedly to have regretted and repented and was troubled at his heart that he made man because man had become evil. We read in the Bible that man who became evil and everything he thought about and did was evil and it troubled God. It bothered him. 
it troubled him at his heart that he even ever made man. Which in the, it implies that God had no knowledge of his creation and what would become of them before creating them. This is the indication that you receive from the understanding of the Bible such verses. But this is unacceptable to attribute to God. That God is learning about the creation as he go along, as they go along, as if somehow that God did not know that man would become wicked and disobedient to him. Very foreign to the Aqidah, the pure, pristine belief and understanding of God that the Muslims present.